Well, hey everybody, this is Steve, a thousand year home. Welcome aboard. So I'm building off grid uh, in two shipping container homes in central Texas. Uh, yesterday it hit 102. It's been highs all through June. So I've done a couple of things um, for heating and cooling and none of them have worked mathematically speaking. So let me explain here. So uh, <clears throat> I am been, uh, I've got in storage right now a mini split that's big enough to heat and cool the whole container plus a little. So like 600 square feet, right? And I'm 300 square feet, so I guess double. But uh, the first thing I did was uh, I had a little, uh, this is my second portable unit. So I had a smaller unit than this that was just 320 square feet, which was supposed to heat and cool this whole container. But uh, I walled off half of it. Now I've got insulation all the way through this thing and uh, it could cool this area sort of. So it's 92 in here right now, which feels cool to me because there's a breeze blowing, but that's pretty hot. Right? You can't sleep in that very easily, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't know how our ancestors did it. No idea. Uh, but anyway, so I've upgraded to this particular mini split, which will do a little over 480 square feet. And now the whole shipping container, it's 8 by 40. That's 320 square feet, right? So uh, this should do this whole shipping container. And uh, it does it. Again, it does one-third okay. And by okay, I mean it'll give me a 15, 20 degree cooler than outside. Uh, but no way that it'll change this into 60 degrees. So um, now mathematically, I've done what I'm supposed to do as a consumer. I'm not a high back guy. I'm not an AC guy, right? So I'm just doing what consumers do. Uh, looking at what the square footage of the container is and saying, oh, well, they're saying that this uh, uh, unit will give me heating and cooling through the whole unit plus an extra 20% capacity. So I should be able to set it down to like two on the fan and like, I don't know, 75 on this. Uh, but point in case, it doesn't and it doesn't keep up. So, um, and these aren't cheap by the way, right? They're three, 400 bucks and I'm going through them like that. So um, you have to factor that in if you're building off grid using one of these units temporarily. Uh, I think you should get into professional uh, AC probably as soon as you possibly can. But um, I'm scaling up and figuring this out uh, empirically. I'm just uh, looking at what the uh, manufacturer says the unit can do, using the unit, finding out it, it can't. Uh, and these aren't junk. I've had a Whirlpool. Um, and this one uh, says win winter w y w h y n t e r it's probably a generic amazon or best buy or something and 480 uh, square feet is what that's was supposed to heat and cool which uh you know is one and a half times the space and it can't even do a third <laughs> So, and insulated, and this is insulated, right? I've got uh, a five eighths inch drywall, I've got foil, I've got mineral wool bat, uh, and on the outside uh, where I can, I put a uh, reflective uh, uh, paint that'll shoo the, uh, shoo the uh, paint, uh, the heat away. And it still can't keep up. So I'm, I'm scaling up one more time because I have to get this right when I do buy uh, my mini splits for the whole area. If the manufacturers, um, what they say will work, doesn't work, I have to know that, right? And I have to know, oh, use double or whatever. I think this is why HVAC guys often oversize for houses. Um, I don't think they're trying to rip you off. I think in the South here, with the loss of efficiency and, and uh, this burning sun, I think they, they're doing the best they can. So maybe they're selling you twice over as much AC unit because that's the only way to effectively control um, heating and cooling inside of anything. So uh, let me go ahead and show you what my next temporary solution is. So, um, and I, I've got that outside, so I'll show you, we'll open it up. So because I'm just taking the manufacturer specs, right? And uh, saying, oh, the manufacturer says that this will heat and cool a shipping container in square foot. And it doesn't. Maybe it would heat and cool up in a... Maybe if you're talking about going from 85 to 72 in a little bungalow up north. A different kind of sun. But in my environment, uh, everything that I've read 
about every device. It doesn't matter if it's a Whirlpool or in this case, I bought a Keystone. <clears throat> and I bought a Keystone because it has uh, and the brand new technology, the inverter, which doesn't give you the heavy click brrr, when the uh, AC turns on. That's easier on a generator like mine or the solar. Uh, so that's one reason. And it also heats. So maybe I've solved the winter. Um, anyway, I cut it. Um, window air AC units are a temporary animal. <laughs> I, I don't want window AC units in my uh, nice home. But uh, they are practical and they would still, even if I don't use them in the home and I do AC, I might need one in a garage or um, um, the solar room for the, uh, you know, the, where the solar combiner boxes are. The power room, the mechanicals, <clears throat> just to keep that. So uh, it's not a waste of my time or money necessarily uh, for me to do this. But I don't want to keep doing this over and over while I size up and figure out how much heating and cooling do I need, uh, practically speaking. Because this one is 600 square feet. That's almost double, almost double of what they say I need to heat and cool an insulated home. So this 320 square feet on the, uh, on the shipping container. So right there, you can see the window that I'm going to put this in. That's a bedroom window right there. So I'm going to stick it in there uh, and uh, see if this, if it heats and cools the entire shipping container length from stem to stern. Because you all saw that little portable unit is just doing this third, like from the bathroom window to the wall. That's all it's doing, right? Uh, you know, there to there. So... Uh, and it's not doing it well. <laughs> it's really not. I have to wait till like 1030 at night before the temperature gets down into anything that's considered uh, <clears throat> sane. Like, you know, I'm here working 92 and uh, I'm working just fine. But still, that's probably not a safe uh, level of heat. But it is what it is. And if I ever want to get done, that's what I'll do. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, Keystone, it's not something that I'm, I'm pushing. It's just the least expensive. And I bought 220 volts. So I bought a 220 volt, so it'll be more efficient. We'll find out together. So let me go ahead and unbox this. And uh, get it set up. I need to uh, put in some reinforcement. I'm going to use this old Ikea table here, these metal Ikea brackets around a uh, two by four to give it a little more support. So that's how I'm re repurposing those and why they're there. I don't buy Ikea. I don't know where those, that table bottom came from, <laughs> to be honest. That certainly didn't come from me. Well, I'll open this up and y'all can look at the brand that I'm using. Oh, there we go. So it's uh, one of those, right? <laughs> I hate it when they do a manual like that. It's one of uh, 10, one of 10 different kinds of AC units all in the same family. Ah, that's helpful. <laughs> it says it's 2HD. So it's a 12 2HD. So I'm going to guess that that's uh, 12,000 BTU. And 2HD, uh, I wouldn't know what that stands for, but... Uh, Anyway, 12,000 BTU is what I'm setting up here, if you're wondering. So 12,000. 12, <laughs> Get a kick out of the, this world. I am saving all the styrofoam, and eventually I'm thinking of shredding it up and adding it to the concrete when I do the roof, uh, because I believe it'll make the concrete lighter and it'll provide an insulative value. I've seen other guys doing it. Uh, the roof here doesn't need to do anything other than shed water, right? So I'm not planning, I'm planning to use ferro concrete, but with something like that to make it lighter 
over volcanic rock. So that's how I'm going to build the roof when I pour it. It looks like I could just pick this up and it will just come right over the top. I love it when they're easy. So it is 220 volt. I've got a twist. I don't know if I have that plug here, so I might not get that just going tonight. But I can at least get it in the window. I'm going to go ahead and save this uh, under the owner's manual so that I know what it is. It does say that it's the 12,000 BTU. 2HD, I don't know what that stands for. Probably heat and cold, maybe, to function. Nothing uh, special here. I did get it because uh, <clears throat> it has the uh, the uh, the other reason why I went. I looked for one that I c had uh, controls on the front that I recognized. I intuitively said, "Oh, I could see up. I could see down on here. I don't have to get real fancy. I could see morning, at night. Uh, you know, heat cool mode. I could see it all right here, real easy." So. No particular manufacturer uh, loyalty on my part. You know, I look for value. Um, they all fall apart. They're all made in China. I don't know. Heavy. All right. Let me see what it says for supports here. Oh, they might have sent me a support. Let me look in here. That would make this a little easier. So no, nothing to support it up and keep it supported, but uh, uh, good insulation, ways to keep the cool inside the house. And there's some grill that goes on the back. Well, let me get the window set up where I think it'll support an AC unit of that weight. I'm not a big fan of window air conditioning units, but uh, <clears throat> they're useful. Uh, like if you're renting a place or like me, I'm in transition here uh, while I'm heading towards the final construction. But I'm living in it while I build, which is itself, it's a mistake. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Uh, I really am. So uh, it's not, uh, it's being this Spartan, is it, for everybody? <laughs> but... Uh, Nevertheless, as I build this thing, it does let me size in. Because manufacturers are telling me this, that that AC unit you saw, the little black one that's a portable slide it around unit, that one's supposed to cool this whole thing plus an extra 120 square feet. It doesn't even get close. So, you know, I'm scaling up here a little bit uh, as it is in order to uh, figure this all out. So, anyway... Uh, I'll eyeball all of this. <clears throat> Maybe I'll get a level. I'll pull that screen out and eyeball it and get this set up then so I can put that unit in. It's super heavy, so look here. Uh, the back end of my uh, Ranger is the same height as the window. So I'll move it from the truck to the Ranger and from the Ranger to the window because um, it's a two-man lift and... I'm one man, so that Polaris will be the second man. <laughs> Let's get this set up here. Pull that screen out first. Before I wrestle it around, I want to make sure it fits in the window. <laughs> that would, This is the top. It's the same size. That would have been something to spend all this time and then go, Oh, man, it's too wide. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I measured it before I bought it, but, you know, I bought it a couple of weeks ago and it finally came in, so. All right, so here's my idea. I'll put a piece of 2x4 across here, level to the window, and then I'll use those uh, little uh, IKEA legs to drop in here to support, and then I'll put the unit up. Then I have to look for a uh, 
and I have several 220 extension cords, but I don't know if I have any with the same uh, style of uh, connector as that 220, so we'll find out about that. All right, sliding all over. Fine. Now, since it's gonna be, um, I'm gonna adobe wrap this house, I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws as far over to the edge because there'll be some amount of adobe that'll wrap over the uh, uh, the um, cedar. So I'm hoping these little screws don't even show up at all in the final design. We shall see. We shall see. See how bad we did. Well, we did pretty bad. We did pretty bad. I'm gonna guess that the uh, AC unit will need a little angle this way so that it'll uh, drain. But let me flip the bottom up and take a look at it and see if it's flat or if it has a little uh, convex. For some reason, I didn't buy the plate on the bottom. It's probably a hundred dollars, and I thought, oh, I'll just I'll just do this. So um. It's, it's reasonably flat. There's a little bit of angularity in there as they molded things around metal. So, But I'm going to get this better so that the, the AC unit has a little angle. So it drains water out instead of in and hopefully doesn't mold at all. I'm hoping the sun comes up every day and dries it up. But nevertheless, I don't want water in the house. Now that's level, so I'm going to go level and down half a bubble. So I'll split the bubble. How about that? There, that seems reasonable. Same thing here. I'll split the bubble. What are you doing? Stop. So somebody who might be an AC guy down in the um, uh, down in the comments, if you'd put why the manufacturer says it'll heat and cool 400 square feet, it's an insulated house. Why it doesn't? Like, do you have to factor in windows? Uh, how much exposure? What part of the uh, hemisphere you live in? I don't know. A lot of questions. Like, <clears throat> the reason why I'm being cautious upscaling to a lot of AC is I can't have moisture inside this house, right? If I'm condensing a lot of moisture into the walls, it will cause uh, both mold and uh, because this is a sealed container. So now I live off grid. I open windows. There's a lot of things like that. But um, when I bought something that said 320 square feet and it won't even do a third of that, it'll do 100 square feet. Well, that's three times overstated. And uh, I don't know why. So if somebody knows why, uh, I can't look at the manufacturer specs and go, oh, 320 square feet, oh, that'll do a shipping container. It doesn't. <laughs> 
So if somebody could explain that to me so I could size uh, AC better in Central Texas. 102 today. Uh, I'm working right now. In the evening, it's 92. So, and I, I consider I, it's refreshing to be at 92. <laughs> All right, I'm going to cut this extra piece of wood off here so it doesn't look as bad as it does right now. <laughs> All right, my next idea is to get those uh, IKEA uh, L brackets. They are welded and put them on here and put them up against that and use those as uh, external support. So let me get those. All right, so there's those little IKEA legs. Uh, <laughs> I don't buy IKEA. I have no idea where this came from. But look, it has a little rubber stop, so it'll be up against the house and hopefully dampen vibration. And uh, it is welded up here. I, I, again, I'm not looking to make this part last a thousand years, but I want it to last a season or two while I build the house out. So this is the length of the, uh, you know, this piece of styrofoam was the cover. So I'm just looking where I want to put these legs uh, for support. Well, there feels good. There feels good. That feels good. So, uh, let me go ahead now. What I'll do is I'll make little notches in the 2x4s to fit these so they just go down flush. I'll drill them, tap them so they're in there like that, fully up against it. And uh, then drill this and put a screw in it so it stays. And then I'll be ready to put the AC unit on top. I hate it when I do that. And I do it every time. I bend the blade by pulling it out and flipping it on. I might go get a... There we go. A sprite when I was ready to give up. All right, so I don't kill my back. I'm gonna load that up there, which gets me a little higher, almost the window height. Then I'll back up to the window and stick it into the window. Uh, the only thing I have to make sure is whatever way I slide it on, I can slide it in the window. I don't wanna rotate it <laughs> the wrong way. So that's the right way. If I slide it in that way, I slide off the back. Uh, no. Uh, the face has gotta be out. <laughs> the bay. <laughs> Woo! 
How strong am I feeling, internet? Double check that. That feels like it'll hold. What did they say? 65 pounds? 85 pounds? I think 85 pounds. What I saw. Heavy. Whatever it is. internet we did it yay team well let's get it around now what I'll do so nobody bumps this is I'll cut this off here and then I'll screw a screw up in here I can see before I put them hmm well I can see on this side I don't have anything here I see a capacitor or something, so I won't mess with that. Well, I'm glad that it actually came with two side panels, so I don't even have to cut anything. So I'm not going to move it, but let me put one screw in to keep it a solid uh, before I cut those off. So I'll put one self-tapper in there and call that a good enough. I'm happy. I'll cut both of those off tomorrow. It's getting dark as you can see. So once again, I'm racing the dark. There are some things you can't do with a Parkinson's shake. Putting in screws, tiny ones, that's something. All right, another day. All right, so I've got enough stuff here to finish this up. Now, uh, there is a thunderstorm coming, and uh, I backed up the, uh, the uh, ranger so that I don't have sparks going on the grass. It's dry. <laughs> so let me cut these off. And I don't want cattle bumping them. My cattle still come up. My horses come up and graze. So I've got that risk. And I might end up putting a bar or board across here for reinforcement. Um, I've got a fire extinguisher back there. I'm in good shape. So let me go ahead and do the good thing. So I'll note that this is a 210 volt. It's also not rated for outside, so I'm gonna pin this up underneath the house so it can't get rained on. And uh, let me go ahead and uh, finish wiring this up. Uh, you can see that they, uh, uh, let's see what's the English side. So on the English side, they tell you what uh, the plug looks like for what the power rating is. Now I bought this as 210, 240 really. 240 20 amps so it'd be more efficient on my generators and with solar when I get done with the solar Again, I'm just trying to size these AC units to put up with uh, you know uh, 
the million degrees that's uh, heading this way. So, so far all of the AC units that were sized for this place just couldn't keep up. They were one third what they needed to be. This is a 540, they're about uh, 550 uh, uh, square foot, 12,000 BTU, 240 volt. So let me finish this up. Now, if you're doing a lot of, like me, a generator adapter, uh, I am off grid. These are the kind of things you're going to just run to, uh, you know, Harbor Freight or somewhere and pick up. Uh, maybe maybe an RV place might have them. But, uh, you know, the, the plugs, you can see they're turned. It's a special plug. You see that? All right. Yeah. So let me get this all, all plugged in and wired up. I hate it when I forget a knife. Let me run this under the house. And clip everything up. And it won't get wet. And fire it up. <laughs> we'll all we'll all know together. And this is a locking type of uh, 220. It goes in and it twists, and then it doesn't come apart. So you'll notice that these are really thick cords that I buy. And this is a 240, 20 amp. It might be a 30 amp. I forget exactly which one I bought. So, um, but I do match them to the voltage of the truck. And that's a 110, 20 amp. So, uh, and you can see the, the clear part lets you know when they're beginning to erode, the dielectrics beginning to erode. So I'm going to do the uh, big AC unit first because I want to know what circuit because I have split phase on the generator. So what that means is I have an A circuit and a B circuit and I want to balance both of them so that as it recharges it'll recharge uh, equally across the battery planes. So my generator is on on my truck. I'm running everything through my truck so let me go ahead and say yes. Now I haven't plugged in my computer, my office and all that. I'm just working right now on the um, AC unit that I just plugged in. I don't have anything on, so I'm not, uh, I didn't turn on that AC unit. So look, less than 200 watts on both sides. So now let's turn on the AC and see what side A or B it ends up showing up on. All right, so let's give this little unit a power up. Comes on, it says 72. Now this is heat and cool, so I'm looking over here at the panel. I don't know anything about this. I haven't read the instructions or anything. So right now it's on cool. I could see the snowflake, but I do have a heat pump on here and it's at 72. So the test will be to see whether or not this unit, which does 550 square feet, will be enough to do the entire shipping container. And uh, we will find out from there because so far I haven't found the secret sauce <laughs> for doing all that. So, but I do have a, a mini split in storage, uh, but I think it's 12,000 square foot. So we'll find out from there. Uh, look at that. Yeah, very pleased. Very, very pleased. So set for 72. I'm going to go ahead and set it all the way down just to see how far down it goes. All right, 62 is the bottom. Uh, the fan looks like it's on automatic. I could probably change it. Well, one's recirculatory. We're going to do A for automatic. There's a night mode. There's a lot of modes. So now let's go check the electricity and see how much is being pulled and what circuit. And right there you have it. And that is why you do 220. Oh, look, and it even, even, it's even balanced for me. 
570 across each circuit so it really doesn't matter which one I plug the computers into so let me go in and uh, plug in the uh, computers and uh, into one of the circuits I would like to balance both of this across there but uh, that's going to keep it cool it's also going to help this uh, truck to not burn a lot of gas while it does generator mode so perfect I, I can it could not be happier now this is a new kind of AC unit that's called an inverter that doesn't have the hard click when the AC turns on. Uh, we'll, we'll see what the temperature is. It's 90 in here right now. The AC is blowing 82. It's going down 7, 65. It is blowing 65. So I'm happy in that with that. So now I plugged in the other circuit, so I'm running the full house. Uh, so it had add, added, you know, uh, 100 watts on each channel. I could not be happier. I could go 360, uh, 3600 watts per channel, 7.2 kilowatts total. So I'm in good shape here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, button everything up and uh, see what temperature we get. We saw, see I started off at 90. Well, let me see what time it is at uh, seven o'clock at night so <laughs> inside the house and i got a storm coming in so <laughs> we'll see all right so the ac unit is doing really good let me rotate here so uh what am i what am i blowing out of there 69 out of there it's set to 71 taking a look at uh what the walls are 73 so um and the power draw on that has been uh, very, very good. You saw 600 per channel, so 1,200 BTU, um, I'm sorry, kilowatts for, for the 12,000 BTU. Uh, I'm going to give this particular, it said Keystone on it. It's just a generic Amazon, nothing fancy. What I did is I looked for something that was 220, 240 actually. And you saw that I had to uh, order special cords for that. But it was worth it for the efficiency because now I can hear the generator not turning on as much as it would, uh, which will be a lesser load too on the house. And eventually if this ends up in a garage or something else, because I do have some high efficiency mini splits to put in here. But um, the whole building is uh, uh, nice and it is over 100 outside and you see I'm running 73 in here. Uh, the rest of Texas is in right now a power outage, and I've got power plus AC plus the internet and yada, yada, yada. So uh, there is some benefit to having your own power off grid uh, right here. Now, none of the math worked, right? So if you take a look at your specs, it says it'll heat and cool 320 square feet. No, uh, especially here in central Texas, especially when you're in a lot of heat, especially when the outside's a metal container. Uh, you know, I am insulated, so, but I, I needed to step it up uh, to something that had 550 square feet to heat and cool 300 square feet. Um, and I don't have any moisture, no condensation on the windows, nothing bad. It's been humid. So I think I'm at the sweet spot. I know what I need per container. Uh, and now I can go forward from there uh, with some math and get my right size. Now, eventually, when I put earth bag around this thing, and add 800,000 BTU value of non-insulation stabilization. Uh, once I get it to a certain mass, it'll stay there. Uh, by the time the heat takes four hours to soak through the walls, by the time it soaks through the walls, it'll be night. And so that you chase that heat cycle through the Adobe style home, you end up with their home being very efficient on the inside. Uh, so hopefully I won't need a whole lot of heating and cooling. So anyway, this is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. If you're looking for uh, heat and cooling of your shipping container, this is a 40-foot high cube, uh, still in construction, as you can see around me, but it is insulated. Uh, there's a half-inch mineral wool. There's a three-four, uh, five-eighths inch drywall. There's uh, bubble foam uh, infostop uh insulation in there and then the outside i did coat with the thermo uh ceramic paint uh, that i i could additive that i could just add into paint it was wasn't anything fancy so the roof i still have to do the roof i'm going to do a reflective material on the roof uh coating on that i just didn't have enough material so i have to buy that anyway all those things together you see i'm 73 and it's uh anywhere it's about 100 degrees outside right now um, I'm full sun, so, <laughs> so I'm doing it. So there you go. Uh, Central Texas uh, is where my uh, latitude and longitude is. So 
uh, you know, if you're in similar in a similar environment, Australia maybe, uh, not the uh, heart of Australia, but you know, uh, there you go. Uh, 1200 B, uh, 12,000 BTU, 550 square feet of heating cooling. And I haven't tried the heat yet. I just don't care to add any more warmth in my life. So I'm going to trust and have faith that this little keystone will do what it's supposed to do, and the heat pump will heat pump. So five stars right now.